I'm at the airport Ljubljana and this is my second time going to Copenhagen. I'm flying to Copenhagen but then I'll go with a train to my final destination which is the city of sound. Stick around. And finally after two days of traveling I arrived to the sound hub in Denmark or here I've got my host who's gonna show Hi. us around a little bit so welcome to Stroh and welcome to sound hub Denmark the whole idea is that we want to have sound companies working closer together in a nice environment like this where all the facilities are there in order for you to to test and, and validate your product all the companies that are, will be working here will be focusing on sound, so there should be something in the problem they're going to solve or something in, in the solution that has to do with sound. Why is Struer known as the city of sound? Struer is known as the city of sound because Struer is the town where Bang & Olsen was born in 1925. South of Denmark is located here in the former Bang & Olsen buildings. It was the former R&D department of Bang & Olsen. And when they moved out, we took over the place and we had renovated 3,100 square meters. But I can't show you everything. It's so secret, you know, classified stuff. All right, so day one was a success. I learned a lot about the sound hump, the Struer, and the history of Bang & Olufsen. So now on the second day, I have business labs and tech lab sessions with our mentors. It's also important that I assemble a few headphones and get them ready for the measurements on the third day. Hopefully, I'll get it all done. It's gonna be a ride. I did manage to get um a laboratory, so a place where I can actually build the headphones uh, for tomorrow when, uh, when a guy, an engineer from Bang & Olufsen will, will join me and help me um, well, measure our headphones and to do some development in the acoustics. So I'll be working here probably all night, you know, to catch up with everything for tomorrow. Let's go! That is a prototype and yeah, that's that's all you're gonna see. Yeah. Signing out, bon voyage, see you tomorrow. I managed to put together a control unit and a prototyping unit to play around throughout the day. I'm looking forward to working with such a well-respected expert such as Gerd and experienced top-of-the-line equipment. I hope we'll find a way to fix the low mids boost. Let's see what happens. Gerd uh, comes here and will work on measurements and will work on acoustics for our headphones. This is the very famous Bang & Olufsen Cube, as they call it. So this is where they, they do all the measurements and experiments. This is basically going through, through the building, from the floor to the second floor and all, all the way up. So it's a really big uh, anechoic chamber, I guess. And right, right here is Kurt. And Jack will do the measurement of the impedance now. So I hope we'll find the, the problems we are, <laughs> we are searching for for the past year and, and hopefully Gert will have some magical ideas about solving them. This is the measurement room, a quiet room. Um, here is uh, our friend, right? Hello, Frank. This is where we'll, we'll do we'll do some some of the some of the measurements. Um, and the idea that we are we are trying to uh, to explore uh, would be how can we you know modify our current design of the headphones to make them even more true, even more flat. Uh, using just, you know, acoustics and no DSP or whatever. We have a, a really cool guy helping us out here. Uh, he's been working in Bang & Olufsen for a really long time, his entire life, so he knows everything there is to know about acoustics and the measurements. 
We tried measuring uh, our headphones with the camera gear and the grass gear. Um, and somehow we couldn't repeat the measurements again and again. Being in all some kind of saves, saves the day this time. They have a special ear and we're gonna try using that um, to have some more stability in the intermeasurement so we can repeat them uh, more precisely. And we fucked it up. Even though we had a special ears that made it possible to repeat measurements with consistency, we still got about 2 dB deviation that made it impossible to make conclusions. The reason was me. I built the prototype too fast and there was a gap around the ear pad seal in the thickness of a human hair that made all our efforts go in vain. We are at Bang & Olsen right now. Um, I'll try to show you as much as I can. Here we go, tour begins. I just got away from the group a little bit, so I'm trying to mm. do things that, you know, show things that I shouldn't maybe. These, for example, are the real models that they've been using uh, in the development process, right? So they started with uh, Nothing really special, just a piece of paper to get the model in, um, all the way to, to the final products uh, that you can, you know, get on the market right now. Other speakers was actually made uh, in a miniature world. Super tiny, super small speakers, just to get the design right. I mean, that's kind of crazy or smart. Hmm. That's their flagship speaker system. The uh, initial idea was this thing. Uh, it was in the lab for a few years before they actually attempted to even make a cabinet for it. And it ended out to be casted alloy. It's all one piece. You can imagine that. Crazy. All one piece. Our visit, our tour of Bang & Olufsen has come to an end. It was really cool to see uh, how Bang & Olufsen approach research and designing new things. Thank you very much Bang & Olufsen, thank you very much SoundHub, thank you very much Accelerate Denmark for hosting Olo Audio. Uh, Denmark was great, you were all great and I hope to see you again sometime. This is kind of the conclusion of this uh, for a trip to, to Denmark. Um, so our time here, here is now finished. I'm, I'm gonna leave and try to catch the, the train and then the flight back to, back to Ljubljana.